Hello and welcome to this special show. I'm Farooq Batafi. We are on Pakistan television. We have been exploring various dimensions of international and regional politics and connectivity. Today we are going to talk about a very important body that promises this region progress and development along with security and stability. I'm talking about the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Founded uh, around 20 years ago, this body promises a lot. It has very important uh, members, especially when you talk about the population of this block. It represents almost a half of the population of the world. And then, of course, for India, Pakistan, China, Russia and various Central Asian countries are within it as members. And one country, Iran, is going to join it within this year. Uh, with this kind of scope, we have to talk about the potential of this organization and what it has to offer. Today we are honored to actually have with us the Secretary General of the SEO, uh, Mr. Jiang Ming. Uh, Excellency joins us here and uh, we are going to interview him. Thank you very much sir, for being part of the program. Uh, sir, let me start with uh, one very simple question regarding SEO uh, and your visit to Pakistan. The body uh, is going to hold its uh, foreign ministers meeting in uh, Tashkent later this month and so close to that meeting you have arrived in Pakistan. Could you tell us about the importance of your visit, sir? Uh, thank you. It's my great pleasure to have your interview uh, from uh, Pakistan TV. Huh? Well, it's a well-known TV channel. and. Uh, uh, with your permission, uh, I prefer to use my mother tongue to Please. answer the questions and my uh, interpreter will help us with the, with the translation. Uh, uh, yes, you're right. On July the 28th to 29th, the SCO will hold a foreign ministers meeting in Tashkent in preparations for the Samarkand summit to be held in September this year. As you may well know, sir, I assumed the position as Secretary General of the organization earlier this year. As the new Secretary General, it's my responsibility to better understand, communicate with, and have dialogue with member states. And it's very important to make uh, on-site visits and have face-to-face -face meetings. In May, I visited some other member states. So my plan was to visit all member states before the foreign ministers meeting is held. I'm very happy and honored to have the opportunity to visit Islamabad this time. Yesterday I met with your foreign minister and the day before yesterday I met four federal ministers. In the coming days, I will also have an opportunity to have discussions with Mr. Uh, Prime Minister on issues of mutual interest. There are profound changes taking place in the international situation, reflected in every aspect and the origins of the international community. Undoubtedly, the SCO region has also felt such changes as the organization enters its third decade. Amid all the changes, SCO member states are having in-depth thinking about how the SCO could adapt to the new challenges and threats of the changing international dynamics and how could the SCO deepen its reform to protect the long-term interests of member states as the organization enters a third decade, maybe a fourth decade and more decades to come. So as the Secretary General, I must 
know more about the thoughts of member states and be part of their discussions. It's very important for me to help the member states promote the growth of the SCO as an organization amid the new international landscape and environment. Pakistan is an important member state of the SCO. I look forward to have in-depth communication with the Pakistani side in the run-up to the foreign minister's meeting and the summit in September. I guess that's what brings me to Islamabad. Secretary General, uh, we are talking about Pakistan's membership. Since Pakistan's uh, membership, Pakistan has been an active part uh, member of this uh, esteemed organization. And it has this, even this year, it has hosted many high profile meetings and it is going to do it uh, further in the remaining months as well. How can Pakistan uh, cement its relationship with this organization further? Uh, as you rightly said, the uh, Pakistani side joined the SCO five years ago in 2017. After your accession, Pakistan has all along played an active part in SCO cooperation matters. Uh, and your important role is not just reflected in the events Pakistan has hosted under the SCO framework, such as the meetings. Moreover, on the political front, Pakistan has firmly supported the Shanghai Cooperation Organization's charter, firmly supported the Shanghai spirit, and firmly upheld the common values of SCO countries. On the security front, Pakistan has all along made positive and effective efforts, even sacrifices, for the long-term regional security, uh, the SCO region in particular. Your efforts and sacrifices have benefited regional peace and global stability. Likewise, on the economic front, Pakistan is also very active and proactive in economic cooperation. Your economic and social development strategies are highly compatible with the purposes of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. And on people-to-people -people connections and cultural cooperation, Pakistan is the cradle to some of the greatest civilizations and cultures in history. And you have cultural connections with many other regional countries. Pakistan has always been very active in cultural and people-to-people -people ties. The world is changing, the times are changing, so the Shanghai Cooperation Organization also needs to develop itself. In such a context, we believe there is a great space and great potential for Pakistan to seek cooperation under the SCO framework. For example, on the security cooperation, which is at the core of SCO cooperation matters, Pakistan has rich experience and strong capabilities in maintaining security. So amid the changing regional and international situations, we believe Pakistan has a bigger role to play. And uh, the SCO member states are showing a growing interest in financial cooperation under the organization's framework. And with Pakistan's rich talent pool in the financial sector worldwide, we believe uh, Pakistan can also play an important role in facilitating financial cooperation. Uh, and on practical economic cooperation, many member states have a stronger desire for infrastructure, connectivity, transportation, industrial and commercial cooperation under the SEO framework, which Pakistan has naturally um, good conditions to participate with your enabling geographical location. For many other member states of the SCO, Pakistan's participation in uh, connectivity and other cooperation uh, will be a good boost for trade within the region and with the rest of the world because your participation will be instrumental for the flows of goods, of information, of people, and also of financial resources.
。这个巴基斯坦是在本组织内部为数不多的，呃。Pakistan is an English-speaking country, and we don't have many English-speaking countries in our region. You have close bonds with the Francophone world. So yesterday, when I spoke at the ISSI, uh, Institute for International Studies, Islamabad, I made a suggestion to them. I suggested that the institute could establish an SCO study center. That way, Pakistani scholars and researchers will bring new ideas and suggestions from the English-speaking world to our region. All in all, I'm trying to say is, um, there are many aspects in which Pakistan could participate in a more proactive way in SEO activities. I Allow me not to go into the details. Excellency, uh, I'm glad that you mentioned uh, trade partnership because Pakistan sees itself uh, as potential hub for regional trade. But uh, apart from that, you just mentioned Shanghai spirit. How does that contribute to the aims and objectives of SEO? And what is the true potential of SEO? Uh, the Shanghai spirit embodies a set of common values pursued by the member states together at the inception of the organization. It includes mutual trust, mutual benefit, equality, coordination, respect of the diversity of civilizations and pursuit of common development. It does not contain many characters, but uh, the Shanghai spirit is very substantial. Over the past 20 years, all member states have stayed true to the Shanghai spirit, and they are proud to act in accordance with the Shanghai spirit over the past two decades. And as we look uh, forward on the future of the organization, all member states believe it's important to continue to uphold the Shanghai spirit. It is thanks to the Shanghai spirit that SCO cooperation has been very resilient and growing rapidly. Today, as we can see, there are four pillars of cooperation in the SCO, namely political, security, economic, and cultural cooperation. And um, we have enjoyed 20 years of peace and stability in all member states, there have been notable economic growth and significant improvement in the people's livelihood. Moreover, relations between the member states have become closer and um, with more enjoyed with more affinity. I believe that's also because of our commitment to the Shanghai spirit. The member states all agree that we need to pursue a new type of international relations and foster a community with a shared future for mankind. In this connection, I believe the Shanghai spirit is uh, at the center of the new type of international relations, so to speak. Secretive recipe for the organization's success uh, are more than happy to share with the world. This year, a new member is going to join the ranks of the member countries, that is Iran. How does that addition actually contribute to SEO and its growth? Uh, Since its early inception, the SEO has followed one important principle, that is openness. This is actually not the first time for the SCO to expand its size. The first time was in 2017, when Pakistan and India joined the organization. In the upcoming Samarkand summit, we are expecting discussions and approval of an MOU between the SCO and Iran on the accession obligations for Iran. And after the signing of the document, Iran will have to fulfill its obligations within a one-year term before being accepted as an official member state. And it's not just Iran that is uh, joining the SCO. As you may well know, Belarus has recently submitted applications to join as a member state. 
。实际上，在描述我们正在处理的呃各类。Actually, uh, working at the secretariat, uh, my colleagues and I are handling. All in all, about 11 applications of different kinds. For example, some non-SCO countries applies to join the big family of the SCO. Uh, dialogue partners wants to be upgraded to observer states. Observer states wants to be upgraded to official members. And I also met with quite many um, international friends from the non-SCO countries. They expressed a strong desire to know more about the organization, and know more about the application procedures. The fundamental purpose of the SCO is to seek cooperation. So in cooperation, the more participants, the better. The larger our networks of friends, the better. So the Shanghai Cooperation Organization always stays open and welcome new members with open arms. I believe you will agree me that stronger SEO cooperation will facilitate world peace and security, greater equity and justice in international order, robust growth in the international economy, and better communication between civilizations. Excellency, what are the bottlenecks in the way of greater regional integration and cooperation? Well, just like One's life is always full of challenges, difficulties, and problems. If a person, a country, or an organization seeks to make progress, uh, it must have to overcome difficulties before achieving something. While looking back on the 20 years trajectory of the SCO, there is not a single day when the organization is free from any challenges. Today, the SCO faces certain challenges and issues, and in the future, we believe there may be other challenges and issues. But one thing for sure is the SCO must stay true to its original mission. The SCO must stay true to the Shanghai spirit, to the common values followed by member states. It must seek further development, further improvement. The SCO must reform itself to increase efficiency and uh, improve the efficacy of work. That means the basic principles enshrined in a SCO charter must be followed. In SCO cooperation, we must follow the fundamental purpose of cooperation, that is non-alignment, not targeting any third party, no interference in other countries' internal affairs. And the SCO is firmly against the approach of stoking ideological confrontation or building confrontational blocks in uh, handling international affairs. You asked about bottlenecks uh, for SEO development and cooperation. I, I would rather approach your question from the um, potential challenges and difficulties facing the organization. Because when you describe something as bottlenecks, it seems when the bottlenecks are broken, things will be all good. But that's not the case in the development of the SCO. We will face one difficulty after another, and we will overcome one difficulty after another. With your permission, Excellency, we have to take a break. Then we come back. Uh, viewers, uh, don't go away. This interview will continue after the break. Welcome back. Uh, before uh, going to the break, we were uh, speaking to the uh, uh, Secretary General of SEO. Excellency, addressing the Raisina dialogues in April this year, you particularly spoke about the threat posed by the Cold, uh, cold War mentality. What can SEO do to actually take, uh, ensure that in coming days we uh, don't actually resurrect some kind of Cold War in this world? 
First of all, allow me to thank you for following my remarks on different occasions. For a person of my age, half of my lifetime was spent in the Cold War era, and the rest, the latter half, is spent in the post-Cold War era. For my generation, the Cold War left us with grim memories, and in the post-Cold War era, people like me have witnessed the changes and benefited from the development. Let's not go into detailed descriptions of the Cold War era, but um, after the end of the Cold War, um, there, when I visited the member states in May, I was very surprised because the previous time before May for me to visit these countries was about 10 to 20 years ago. It's very surprising to see every member state has achieved a notable economic and social development. The people's lives are uh, getting better significantly and all the Central Asian countries looked totally different. This is my first visit to Islamabad, but um, I did have the opportunity to visit Karachi some 30 years ago. I can imagine tremendous changes must have taken place in Karachi. In my diplomatic career, I had the opportunity to visit more than 100 countries in, developing, in the developing world, such as Africa, the Middle East, and Asia. And the tremendous changes can be found at any place in the developing world. Take uh, SEO member states, for example. Why do they achieve such tremendous economic and social development in a short span of several decades? Of course, it's because of the hard work of the peoples, because of the wise policies adopted by the authorities. But in the case of the SEO region, we are proud to say that the SEO mechanisms must have played an important role and made an important contribution. Another important factor that we must not ignore is that uh, the developing countries have enjoyed the dividend of development following the end of the Cold War. It is due to the overall international environment that focuses on peace and development that the developing countries were able to seize the opportunity to concentrate on their own development. That's why and that's how they have helped improve the living standards of their people and brought about big changes in their economic and social arena. I personally come from a developing country. I myself benefited from globalization and the growth of international economy. So against such a backdrop, will any one of us tolerate the comeback of the Cold War mentality? I believe the vast majority of people in our world will say no. What the world need is sustained and sustainable development. We need to protect our planet uh, to be a stay away from wars, drugs, climate change, and the threats of uh, other challenges. We need greater development. Instead of confrontational blocks, conflicts, or wars, whether be it Cold War or Hot War, this is also my impression from the visit to member states in May. The leadership and people of the member states I visited all feel proud of SCO's development over the past 20 years, and they all agree that the SCO is one of the most successful international organizations in the world. Right. Excellency, I'm so glad that you mentioned uh, the need to avoid wars, Cold War and Hot War. Uh, um, these regional countries, the member countries, they have mutual bilateral disputes as well. 
can SEO provide them a platform to resolve the mutual or bilateral disputes? Their life is always full of problems and just like in a family. Within international organizations, there will also be frictions, problems and disputes. Uh, in the SEO's case, for one thing, we follow one basic consensus that uh, is the member states will not bring their bilateral problems into the multilateral framework. For another, I bet you have noticed that the SEO has not established a mediation mechanism to get involved in the disputes and problems between member states. That is to say, the SCO is not in a position to be directly involved in the disputes, conflicts, or problems between member states. And the SCO is not in a position to provide direct methods or mechanisms for mediation. But, Please don't read it as the SCO keeps an indifferent position. Another side of the coin is the SCO keeps cooperation at the center of its activities. The SCO promotes cooperation as a way to advance political trust among member states so as to advance regional and international peace, security, and stability. And the SCO cooperation helps to advance economic and social development in member states and in the entire region. It helps to facilitate communication and mutual learning between peoples and civilizations uh, so that we can better understand each other. All in all, the mission of the SCO is to expand the shared interests of countries. With greater and more shared interests, the member states will feel compelled to uh, resolve their differences, conflicts, or disputes in a wise and cool-headed way through coordination instead of resorting to force. And uh, also we have earlier talked about the Shanghai spirit, which represented the common values firmly embedded in the heads of the member states. Looking back on the journey of the past 20 years, it's not like that the member states have never had any problems or differences, but generally speaking, SEO member states have acted in solidarity. And the existing problems and differences have not held back SEO cooperation. Excellency Afghanistan is a very important country in the region. It, is, it also enjoys observer status in SEO. But of late, uh, it is going through crises upon crises. Uh, in, that, uh, in such a situation, what can the SCO do to stabilize the country and help it get out of these crises? Uh. Yes, like you rightly observed, the, uh, Afghanistan is an important country in our region and an observer state of the SCO. Like you rightly put it, Afghanistan is an important country in the region and an observer state of the SCO. The SCO has been following developments on the Afghanistan issue very closely. Since the, before the establishment of the SCO, terrorist, extremist and separatist forces in, Afghan in Afghanistan was infiltrating to the entire region, posing serious threats to regional security. That's part of the context for the establishment of the SCO. As uh, you may well know, apart from the Secretariat, the SCO has another permanent agency, that is the regional anti-terror uh, structure based in Tashkan, Uzbekistan, the RATS. The RATS has played a very positive and effective way in containing terrorism. Of course, the SCO is not satisfied with its existing efforts. Our more ambitious goal is to 
see that Afghanistan becomes a constructive force in our region that can contribute to regional peace, stability, security, and prosperity. CSCO has to undoubtedly make greater and more strenuous efforts. Last year, given the tremendous changes in situations in Afghanistan, the SCO countries have reached a consensus. The SCO believes Afghanistan must be built into a unified, peaceful, democratic, and secure country free from wars, narcotics, and terrorism. In the meantime, we believe the government of Afghanistan should be an inclusive government uh, covering all political groups, religious factions, and tribes. The SEO will continue to make efforts to that end. And we trust that Pakistan, as our member state, has a special role to play. In conclusion, Excellency, would you care to comment on the, your visit and what takeaways uh, you're taking along with you? Well, this is my maiden visit to Pakistan as a member state. And for me, as the Secretary General, I have been warmly welcomed and received by the Pakistani government. I met with multiple federal ministers, and tomorrow I will have an opportunity to have in-depth interactions with Mr. Prime Minister. I also had extensive uh, communication with the business sector, the financial sector, think tanks, and the academia. We believe um, this visit is very helpful and productive for me, and it will be a great boost for my fulfillment of obligations as the Secretary General. And I look forward to a more prominent role played by Pakistan in cooperation under the SCO framework. I believe SCO cooperation can bring more benefits to the Pakistani people. We look forward to an even brighter future for the SCO and for Pakistan. Thank you. Excellency, thank you very much for your time. You have listened to the Honorable Secretary General's comments. The SEO offers a myriad of opportunities to the region. All we have to do at this moment is to work closely and try to explore as many opportunities as possible. If uh, um, uh, Pakistan succeeds in building the kind of uh, network and the kind of uh, ties it, it has been trying to, and uh, they, uh, it sees the potential of in the SEO, the sky is the limit. This was today's program. Thank you very much for watching. Take care.